Sigmund Freud, 1856-1969, psychologists have considered a variety of possibilities to account for individual differences, defective conscience, emotional immaturity, inadequate childhood socialization, maternal deprivation, and poor moral development. The Freudian view on criminal behavior was based on the use of psychology in explaining an approach in understanding criminal behavior, the foundation of the psychoanalytical theory. His study emphasized the recognition of childhood events that could influence the mental functioning of adults. His examination of the genetic and then the developmental aspects gave the psychoanalytic theory its characteristics. In this video the works of Freud will be presented using the following sequence. First, level of consciousness second, human personality third, defense mechanisms fourth psychosexual stages of development. Perhaps the most impactful idea put forth by Freud was his model of the human mind. His model divides the mind into three layers, or regions. Conscious. This is where our current thoughts, feelings, and focus live. Preconscious. Sometimes called the subconscious. This is the home of everything we can recall or retrieve from our memory. Unconscious. At the deepest level of our minds resides a repository of the processes that drive our behavior, including primitive and instinctual desires. McLeod, 2013. Later, Freud posited a more structured model of the mind, one that can coexist with his original ideas about consciousness and unconsciousness. Sigmund Freud maintained that the personality consists of three different elements, the id, the ego and the superego. The it is the aspect of personality that is driven by internal and basic drives and needs. These are typically instinctual, such as hunger, thirst, and the drive for sex, or libido. The it is also the unconscious and stems from our instinctive abilities. The it acts in accordance with the pleasure principle, in that it avoids pain and seeks pleasure. Due to the instinctual quality of the id, it is impulsive and often unaware of the implications of actions. The ego is driven by the reality principle. The ego works to balance the id and superego, by trying to achieve the id's drive in the most realistic ways. It seeks to rationalize the id's instinct and please the drives that benefit the individual in the long term. It helps separate what is real, and realistic of our drives as well as being realistic about the standards that the superego sets for the individual. Additionally, the ego is how we view ourselves. This is conscious but not always true. For example, someone could believe they are the best looking person in the world. However this is just an opinion they have and not everyone will agree with that belief. The superego is driven by the morality principle. It acts in connection with the morality of higher thought and action. Instead of instinctively acting like the id, the superego works to act in socially acceptable ways. It employs morality judging our sense of wrong and right and using guilt to encourage socially acceptable behavior. Furthermore, the superego comes from the people around us. They affect what we believe in and how we view things. So this can be different depending on how you were raised and the culture you were around. The superego is also responsible for finding the happy medium between the id and ego. The id can sometimes be overly dominant when there are humanistic urges. The ego can be very unrealistic in terms of how we view ourselves. Defense mechanisms Defense mechanisms. We all have them. A defense mechanism is exactly what it sounds like. A mental or emotional defense used to protect us from stress and pain. Freud believed these three parts of the mind are in constant conflict because each part has a different primary goal, sometimes. When the conflict is too much for a person to handle, his or her ego may engage in one or many defense mechanisms to protect the individual. These defense mechanisms include repression, the ego pushes disturbing or threatening thoughts out of one's consciousness, denial, the ego blocks upsetting or overwhelming experiences from awareness, causing the individual to refuse to acknowledge or believe what is happening, projection, the ego attempts to solve discomfort by attributing the individual's unacceptable thoughts, feelings, and motives to another person. Displacement. The individual satisfies an impulse by acting on a substitute object or person in a socially unacceptable way, for example, releasing frustration directed toward your boss on your spouse instead. Regression. As a defense mechanism, 
the individual moves backward in development in order to cope with stress, for example, an overwhelmed adult acting like a child. Sublimation, similar to displacement, this defense mechanism involves satisfying an impulse by acting on a substitute but in a socially acceptable way, for example, channeling energy into work or a constructive hobby, McLeod, 2013. Rationalization Most of us rationalize to some extent, but the more sensitive the ego, the more unconsciously this happens. Reaction formation This occurs when your natural reaction to something is unwanted or unacceptable. Instead, the mind forms a reaction that's very much the opposite of the natural reaction. The five psychosexual stages of development Finally, one of the most enduring concepts associated with Freud is his psychosexual stages. Freud proposed that children develop in five distinct stages, each focused on a different source of pleasure. First stage, oral birth to one year the child seeks pleasure from the mouth, for example, sucking, initial psychosexual stage during which the developing infant's main concerns are with oral gratification. The oral phase in the normal infant has a direct bearing on the infant's activities during the first 18 months of life. Second stage, Anal 1 to 3 years the child seeks pleasure from the anus, for example, withholding and expelling feces, the period in a child's psychosexual development during which the child's main concerns are with the processes of elimination. The anal stage, generally the second and third years of life, is held to be significant for the child's later development because the acquisition of bowel control is presumed to be connected to other forms of self-control such as cleanliness and orderliness. Third stage, phallic, three to six years the child seeks pleasure from the penis or clitoris, for example, masturbation, the phallic stage is the third stage of psychosexual development, spanning the ages of three to six years, wherein the infant's libido, desire, centers upon their genitalia as the erogenous zone. The child becomes aware of anatomical sex differences, which sets in motion the conflict between erotic attraction, resentment, rivalry, jealousy and fear which Freud called the Oedipus complex, in boys, and the Electra complex, in girls. Oedipus complex in the young boy, the Oedipus complex or more correctly, conflict, arises because the boy develops sexual, pleasurable, desires for his mother. Electra complex the girl resolves this by repressing her desire for her father and substituting the wish for a penis with the wish for a baby. The girl blames her mother for her castrated state, and this creates great tension. This is resolved through the process of identification, which involves the child adopting the characteristics of the same sex parent. Fourth stage, latent, six years to puberty the child has little or no sexual motivation. The latency stage is the fourth stage of psychosexual development, spanning the period of six years to puberty. During this stage the libido is dormant and no further psychosexual development takes place. Latent means hidden. Freud thought that most sexual impulses are repressed during the latent stage, and sexual energy can be sublimated towards schoolwork, hobbies, and friendships. Much of the child's energy is channeled into developing new skills and acquiring new knowledge and play becomes largely confined to other children of the same gender. Fifth stage, genital, puberty to adult the child seeks pleasure from the penis or vagina, for example, sexual intercourse, McLeod, 2013. Freud hypothesized that an individual must successfully complete each stage to become a psychologically healthy adult with a fully formed ego and super ego, otherwise, Individuals may become stuck or fixated in a particular stage, causing emotional and behavioral problems in adulthood. McLeod, 2013. The genital stage is the last stage of Freud's psychosexual theory of personality development, and begins in puberty. It is a time of adolescent sexual experimentation, the successful resolution of which is settling down in a loving one-to-one -one relationship with another person in our 20s. Sexual instinct is directed to heterosexual pleasure, rather than self-pleasure like during the phallic stage. For Freud, the proper outlet of the sexual instinct in adults was through heterosexual intercourse. Fixation and conflict may prevent this with the consequence that sexual perversions may develop. For example, 
fixation at the oral stage may result in a person gaining sexual pleasure primarily from kissing and oral sex, rather than sexual intercourse. The interpretation of dreams Another well-known concept from Freud was his belief in the significance of dreams. He believed that analyzing one's dreams can give valuable insight into the unconscious mind. In 1900, Freud published the book The Interpretation of Dreams in which he outlined his hypothesis that the primary purpose of dreams was to provide individuals with wish fulfillment, allowing them to work through some of their repressed issues in a situation free from consciousness and the constraints of reality. Sigmund Freud Biography That ends our discussion on psychoanalytical theory of Sigmund Freud. Thank you for watching. For your comments and suggestion type it in the comments.